this video we're going to be talking about how to do layouts, scaling, and different layers in AutoCAD. So right now I am in the layout view and I'm selecting a scale. What you see is that change the scale in the window and then I can choose this lock down here to avoid uh, messing with this layout. And so if I zoom in and out, it zooms in and out on the page without changing what's in that layout frame. I'm also able to change the scale that I'm drawing in and it does not change on the layout. If I come to layout here, uh, I can set a different scale as I desire. If I click lock, I can't change anything. If I unclick that lock, what I can do is pan around and zoom as I desire. So I zoom here uh, and then I want to put it back to the scale that I had, which is 1 to 10 and I'm going to go ahead and lock. Uh, scales are really important in engineering drawings. Often we are drawing things that are very big and representing them in a small space. So if I put something in the model, it should appear in my layout. Layout 2, no problem. Layout 1, the scale that I had set was way too small, and so that was causing me to not be able to see it. So I'm going to choose a more appropriate scale here. In this case, I'm going to choose 1 to 20. What you notice is that 1 to 20 appears smaller than 1 to 10. I can also turn the grid on and off in layout view. Typically, what we display when we print are things that don't have that drawing grid on anymore. The next very important skill that you should have is using layers. The reason for this is that there are often multiple types of subsystems within a drawing and so we want to differentiate between these. Most importantly we have our base drawing layer. I usually use the layer zero for this but you can create your own. Uh, also very important is the dimensions layer and the reason we want this is so that way we can print the drawing both with dimensions on and off and we want to turn all of them on and off at the same time. So I'm going to set those to be green. And what I'll show you later is that I can turn off and on layers uh, with the click of a button. One thing you'll find about dimensions is that depending on the scale you're using, you may have a very hard time reading them. And so you might need to change some settings. And so you could go into annotate and choose that drop down arrow on dimensions. Uh, and you can change things like the text height I'm going to set it to 1 here. You can also change things like the offset from the dimension line. You can change the way that it fits inside. You can change how big the arrows are. You can change uh, all sorts of other things, how far the lines extend beyond the text. So typically wherever you're working, they have some sort of standard that they use and you're going to apply that. I want to use my dimensions, and I'm, so I'm going to select the dimensions layer, and you can see I can dimension this rectangle like this. Uh, the other option that I have is I could uh, start with the item, and in this case a dimension, uh, slap it on there, and then I can change it to the layer that I would like. So that's what I've done. Now I'm going to show you how to turn a layer on and off. So uh, you can do so by clicking the light bulb next to the layer. A dark light bulb says it's off, a light light bulb says it's on. Now I'm going to draw some more shapes to work with layers with. And now I'm going to add some dimensions to the object that I've just done. So for example, I'll put dimensions on this rectangle. I'm also going to grab the radius for both of these circles. And again, I can emphasize the value of being able to turn the dimensions on and off. 
sometimes for a nice drawing I don't want the dimensions on sometimes it's very nice to have it on usually the plans should include both All right now I'm going to add one more layer this one's going to be for center lines and center marks and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to red and I also am going to want to change the line type and what I'll see is that there's currently not a line type that I want so I'm going to click load um, and then I'm going to scroll down uh, until I find um, a dashed line that is uh, the 2x or the 0.5x uh, which means that it's going to be dashed more regularly Right, and then I just need to choose that as my line type. We often use distinguishing line types or colors to differentiate things in drawings. Now if I go to annotate, I can choose uh, to put center marks in my circles. And what I'm going to do is do so and then uh, go back to my home and choose the layer that I want, which is uh, the center line. And then I'm going to go back and add a center line to uh, the other shape as well. So let's go ahead and choose center lines. I believe the click it's a little suspect here. Now I'm going to go to annotate and I'm going to add a center mark for the second circle as well. These are really important for drilling. Uh, if you're designing a part, you need to tell the machinist exactly where the drill is going to have to be placed. And so I'm going to add some dimensions to these drilling plate. Now I, I make a small mistake here. Uh, I grab from the edge of the circle. I really want it from the edge of the rectangle so that way I have a good point of reference. But you can extrapolate that from what I'm doing. Now I'm going to show you how this looks in the layout window. So here I am in the layout you can see that it doesn't quite fit right um, and that's mainly just the location one thing I can do is to move all of this move it down to uh, a different place so I will use the command move uh, which is uh, in the upper left hand corner uh, which you can also just type in move and I'm going to move these objects better into view move is, works by typing move and then specifying a base point and move everything uh, then the other thing I could do is uh, shorten this uh, lead just to bring it a little bit better into view. I could also click the unlock button and pan around as long as I don't change my zoom. Uh, then I can turn the grid off and you can see this is the way it looks. Now if I want to output this to display and put it in some report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to output and choose to export as a PDF. So I could choose export as PDF and then I could save it. And this is the way that I would uh, display things, not just taking a screenshot of a drawing. Finally, I want to emphasize appropriate dimensioning techniques. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, a little shape here uh, with some drill out holes in it. And strictly speaking, I would put center lines or center marks in these circles. Uh, but the appropriate way to dimension a shape is to choose one corner or uh, general corners, which give me a reference and measure from there. So that way I can tell uh, the machinist or myself exactly where these things are geographically located on the shape. So I would measure from a corner and I would be able to see things like this and then I would of course need overall dimensions for the shape itself. Going back to the layout view, uh, for layout 1 I had a scale set to one, 1 to 20. You can see that this is really too small. I can choose scale to fit and then see what the best scale is and then I can adjust from there to give it an actual normal scale. Uh, typically what I would do is I would include some information about the scale on the layout as well as an annotation. And then if I wanted to export, I would export to PDF and that's how I would 
present my work. That's it. Thanks for watching.